Hello there! Recently my guild have been talking about keybindings, and I thought it might be interesting to make a series of videos just showing off some of the common keybinding setups, and also some less common ones that I particularly like. Each of the keybindings have their own advantages and disadvantages. Uh, some of them are easier than others, some of them are perhaps more expensive because you need to buy specialist equipment, but hopefully out of all of them you'll be able to pick one that you like the look of the best. I think one of the main things you need to remember with keybinding is limit the number of things that each finger is doing. If you have one finger that's in charge of, say, strafing left, but it's also in charge of casting your most common ability, then that's a flaw, because particularly as a melee DPS or tank or hunter, you need to be able to cast while moving. Another thing to remember is keep your main abilities on your main fingers. It may sound obvious, but some people do end up keybinding their most common ability on their little finger and then spamming away and they end up not being able to cast after a few minutes. While one or two of the techniques that I'll be showing you do use keyboard turning, it's generally not a good idea, because you turn slower and therefore can't get out of the fire as fast. Try to avoid it, however, if it's that, or have one hand that's casting and moving at the same time, you may well want to consider sticking with keyboard turning for now. For each of the techniques, I'll be aiming to complete Proving Grounds Endless Wave 10 in tanking mode. I'll be learning them in a very short period of time, so if I can do that, chances are it can make it all the way to being a decent technique. I have actually managed to achieve Endless Wave 49 on tanking in the past, but obviously that's not realistic for a technique which I'll be learning in a few hours. On to the first technique then. Now for this technique you need some specialist equipment, however I thought I'd still show it first because it's my favourite and it's the one I use for raiding at the moment. It does require a keypad with a joystick on the side. I personally use the Razor Orb Weaver, however I know that Logitech do an equivalent which is cheaper if you're on a budget, and also there is another one by Razor which has less buttons, so it's not ideal but it will still kind of work for this technique. It also requires a mouse with 12 buttons on the side. I use the Razor Naga, however I know Logitech do an equivalent. And also Razer do a hex version, I think it was, which only has six buttons on the side. Again, the theory will still work for what I'm showing you, it won't give you as many options, but if you don't have as many keys as I do, then it's not necessarily a problem. Uh, so, this one revolves around the idea of moving with your thumb on the joystick on the keypad. Uh, that is keybound to forwards, strafe left and right, and backwards. This is so that I only have one finger that's on movement and it frees up all my others for specialist activities. As well as that, I have the jump button assigned to the paddle below, however you could put it on the top button of the mouse or anywhere else if you want. I use the paddle because I don't jump very often, but it does however mean that if you want to jump you need to hold down both buttons on the mouse in order to jump forwards. It makes strafe jumping very difficult, so you may want to reconsider that if you think it's something you'll use a lot or if you're doing PvP. So for casting, I put my rotation on the keys on top of my keypad, and then I use the buttons on the side of my mouse for my cooldowns. I do it this way round because I like to have all four fingers associated with rotation, so I can spam as much as I like and mitigate as much global cooldown as possible. For people who don't know, if you hit the button at exactly the right time, then you can mitigate a certain portion of global cooldown in WoW. However, this is pretty hard to time properly, so I just spam in order to make sure I hit that move. The other advantage of spamming very fast is that it means that for moves that aren't attached to global cooldown, you can spam many of them within one second. This is really useful because it allows you to eliminate macros, as they are notoriously unreliable. And as any StarCraft Pro will tell you, if you keep on spamming it's much more easy to sustain a high APM than if you try and do bursts of speed. I put all of my cooldowns on the side of my mouse because I won't want to be casting them very often, and any pressure on the side of the mouse will cause it to move, therefore lowering mouse accuracy. Uh, if you have moves that you want to cast very often or very fast, I would recommend putting them on the keypad even if they are a major cooldown. However, as a tank, you tend to only want to be casting one move at a time unless you are really in trouble. So it's not really a problem for me. When keybinding your rotation on the keypad, I'd recommend keeping your most common abilities as close to the centre as possible. 
If you have three or four moves that you use most commonly, which seems to be the case for a lot of classes at the moment, you could put them on the equivalent to W, S and D, because that's where your fingers are most used to lying. If you have moves which you use a fair amount but are perhaps a little less common, then you can put them on the equivalent of E and Q. So then you've got that centre six cluster. And then other moves, like for instance Taunt, I put a bit further out than that, because while it's still a common move, it's not one that you're going to be using all of the time. When keybinding for the mouse buttons, I'd recommend for DPSs to put your offensive cooldowns at the top and your defensive cooldowns at the bottom. If you're doing PvP, you may well want to put your major CC on the mouse buttons, or if you're doing healing, obviously healing cooldowns at the top, and maybe some offensive ones at the bottom if you need it. I would say the main advantage of this technique is the number of things that it uses and the small amount of activities that each finger is doing. The only things that aren't being used are the ones to the right of the mouse, because there are no mice I could find with buttons on that side of it that are easily accessible, and also they're not very well trained and quite weak, so you might well struggle if you decide to keybind anything there anyway. The main disadvantages of this technique are probably the lack of flexibility on the movement. You only have the strafe buttons keybound, I guess if you wanted to you could keybind them to turn and then hold down the right mouse button when you wanted to actually strafe, however that is limiting if you want to click target at the same time as strafing, and strafing is always more useful than keyboard turning. Also, because it's all on a joystick format rather than individual keys, you have less accuracy for your moving. You might well find, particularly as you're getting used to the technique, that when you press forwards you sometimes strafe a little bit first and things like that, so it can reduce accuracy in that way. Also, the lack of easy ability to bind the jump button can be a problem. One variation on this technique you could try, if you don't have a mouse with 12 buttons on the side, is you could just keybind the jump there and have all of your abilities on the keypad. This is particularly useful if you're using a class which doesn't have that many moves to choose from, and also reduces the budgetary cost of this particular technique. So all in all, I'd say this is a very effective high budget technique. It could be tricky to learn, particularly to newer players, because it's using a lot of techniques that won't be familiar to them. However, if you can get the knack of it, it's pretty optimal for raiding. If you have any questions or any comments on this matter, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to help to the best of my ability. Thank you for watching and I'll see you for the next one.